Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple today released the macOS Sequoia 15.3 update. In this video, we're going to go over everything new on both Intel devices and Apple Silicon devices. After that, we're going to take a quick sneak peek at Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs. Let's jump in and get started. Along with 15.3, Apple released the full set of OS updates today. Along with Sequoia, we've got macOS Sonoma 14.7.3 security update. We've got macOS Ventura 13.7.3 security update. And then on the iOS and iPad side, we've got 18.3. Take close note of the build version here. We went from 2D60 to 2D63. On iPad, we also got, for older devices, 17.7.4. AudioOS or HomePod OS 18.3. TVOS 18.3. WatchOS 11.3. And VisionOS 2.3. Our two demonstration Macs today for the update are M1 MacBook Air 2020 for our Apple Silicon device. On Intel, we have our Mac Mini T2 2018, and that's one of the oldest Intel Macs that is still supported. I picked these because I wanted to give a good general representation of the update on some of the slowest Macs available on both platforms. On our MacBook Air, we see that we already have the update available for 15.3. To get more information about it, we can click on more info, and we can see See all of the new features and fixes in 15.3. On this particular device, I have File Vault and Find My Mac enabled, along with my testing Apple ID logged in. All we need to do is click on Update Now, Agree, and type in our password for our account. We're gonna keep track on how long it takes to install the update and prepare and finalize. And on our Intel side, same thing. All we need to do is click on More Info and Update Now, and Agree and we'll see which update installs faster. Now I'll let these download and prepare and install and we'll be right back after the update installs. Okay, our MacBook Air is back up after the 15.3 update. Let's take a look at the build version. And again, I look at that because the iOS version, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, went from 60 on the release candidate last week to 63. So there was three separate releases. But on the Mac OS side, we were the same RC version, 24D60, so there was no change. How long did it take to install the 15.3 update on this MacBook Air? Preparation time at 8.20, so that was seven minutes, and the install part when it restarted to the progress bar took only four minutes for a total of 11 minutes. So this is a major release version, and unlike 15.2 and 15.1, it installed three minutes faster compared to the other updates. So it definitely was faster, but there wasn't as much content in this update as there was in the previous two updates. We're back up on our Intel T2 2018 Mac Mini. It took eight minutes to prepare the update, so longer than the Apple Silicon, and it took 15 total minutes at the restart progress bar to install and finish the update for a total of 23 minutes. So you can see how much faster the Apple Silicon Macs are able to install the Mac with Sequoia update. Now let's take a look at the update sizes. In Apple Silicon, it was 2.54 gigabytes from 15.2, and on Intel, it was 1.39 gigabytes from 15.2. If you're running an open core legacy patcher for unsupported Macs, the update size did change. Previous updates were around 14.53, and now we're up to 15.22 gigabytes, so that's normal for unsupported Macs. Now let's take a look at the system firmware versions for Apple Silicon and Intel. We got a big surprise on this one for sure. On Apple Silicon, we did get an update to 81.2 from 61.3. The OS loader version iBoot is the same as that. On the Intel T2 Bridge OS update, we got an update to 13051. And the big surprise is the Intel T2 firmware on the board was actually updated for the first time ever on macOS Sequoia. It was the same from 15.0 all the way to 15.2, and we got updated to 80.3. So that's a really interesting change, and this is why I keep track of this to catalog these changes. Safari, Safari was also updated to 18.3 on macOS Sequoia, and isn't included in the 15.3 update. But if you have macOS Sonoma or macOS Ventura, you have a separate download for Safari, and that is 18.3 for Sonoma, and I also got the download installer for macOS Ventura 18.3. Now let's take a look at what's new in the macOS Sequoia 15.3 update. This update introduces Jamoji, powered by Apple Intelligence, and it also includes other enhancements, bug fixes, security updates for your Mac. Now, first of all, if we're talking about Jamoji, that is only available for Apple Silicon devices that Apple Intelligence is set up on. Intel devices and Open Core Legacy Apache devices are not going to be able to use these features. So let's take a closer look at Jamoji on our Apple Silicon M1. MacBook Air. On our MacBook Air, here is our new 
Jimoji place card that tells us a little bit about it. Help improve Apple intelligence by creating an original emoji and sharing your feedback. This is in beta, so they're still working on it and it will be in finalized form later. Express yourself. Describe Jimoji you want to create with a few words. Personalize it by choosing someone you know as a starting point for your Jimoji and use Jimoji like an emoji. Add to a message, respond to a tap back, or share as a sticker. Continue. You can use Jimoji in any section where you can add in an emoji. So for example, in our messages app, we can use Jimoji. We can use Jimoji in the notes app. For example, if we open up notes again, we open up a new note and then we can hit control command space to open up our emoji here. You can click on the plus button here and to get right to Jimoji and you can describe what you want to do. So you can say just a simple term like a bear and then hit enter it'll start to attempt to create an emoji based on what you put in this section here. And it'll generate more than just one. You can click on the arrow button and see the different ones that it generates. So let's say we wanna use this one. So select this one here, and then you can see it right here in your emoji list, and you can add that. If you wanna do something else, you can click on the plus button, type in maybe clown. It'll start to work on that. And then let's say we want that whatever the second one gets generated. Let's say we want this one. We can also click the add button and it'll add it right to our emoji list right here. So we can click on the clown button. And the same thing we can do in our messages box. Let's say we're sending a message to someone. We can hit the emoji here and then we can put the bear in there like that. And we can also select another one if we wanted to, whatever you wanted, for example, a bird. and add and there you go and that's jimoji on 15.3 some people think that this could be fun other thing others think this is a waste let me know what you think about this i read through a lot of the comments on some of the apple intelligence features on the last update video some of you liked some of the writing tools but a lot of you were saying you know what you don't want ai slop on your mac you didn't want this. You didn't want the extra space that it took up on the machine. You didn't want to use any of it. Let me know what you think of the Apple Intelligence features on Mac OS Sequoia. The next change is around the calculator application. If we go to the calculator app on our Apple Silicon device here, and we put in an equation like two plus two, a simple one, and then we equal out and there's four. Instead of just having to hit two again, all we need to do is hit the equal and it'll add the last one multiple times anytime you want. On a non 15.3 devices, if you hit the equal, it just basically does nothing. The next changes are around Apple Intelligence summarized notifications. There's been a lot of problems with the summarized notifications mislabeled and the summaries don't match what is really happening. An example here is this good CNET article that shows what happened. This one here that she said was basically one of the friends saying that she had a hard hike and it was tired after and says hike extremely difficult, almost fatal, which didn't even happen. And then the other one said that they went through a tough workout and they're trained that they're trainer put them through and then it somehow, somehow summarized that they needed to go to the hospital. So you can see some of the problems and Apple has basically said that the Apple intelligence summarized notifications are a work in progress. They changed the style for the, some of the notification that now better distinguishes them from other notifications. So you'll see your notification list come up like this and now it'll show in italics whenever it will go through and do the summary. So it doesn't look like a standard one, like for example, this Gmail preview for your movies here. And the other problem here was is that the news and entertainment one was causing some of the most problems. So that's now unavailable and you can see what that looks like in here in the notifications section you can scroll down here and for example one of the ones that it's turned off is in music you can go into music and you can see the summarized notification is temporary uh, unavailable in there you can also see up here on the summarized notifications you go in here and you can see now there's a message saying that some of the summaries may contain errors so that's definitely a work in progress and apple is trying to get that in order 
Now let's take a look at the security fixes in the 15.3 update. There's 51 separate security fixes and vulnerabilities that have been fixed. If you look at the security content page, you can see all of the fixes available in here. What I have not seen though in here is any zero days, which is good. That is something that was out there already and Apple didn't even know about it. So that's a good thing. But there's also 67 individual CVEs that were created for each one of these incidences out there. So Apple put a ton of security fixes in there including six Safari WebKit fixes that are also included in the Safari update for Sonoma and macOS Ventura. Now let's take a look at what's new for Enterprise in macOS Sequoia. Now there's a really important one in here that affects everybody that has caused a lot of stir within some of the Mac admin community but it should also be recognized for standard users and that is that Apple intelligence is turned on automatically after updating to macOS 15.3 or during device setup, unless MDM skips the Apple Intelligence setup pane. So that's exactly what it sounds like. Apple Intelligence after 15.3, even on brand new installs, is set up to install automatically and enable. So if we go into system settings and we go to Apple Intelligence, this will in turn on. Now there's two stages, actually three stages. First of all, it registers with Apple when you click continue on the first menu when you start the setup assistant, then it'll download the anywhere between four and seven gigabytes worth of local database for Apple Intelligence. And then it'll finally enable with this radial here. Those are those three steps. Now, if you don't want that, you're gonna have to go in here and turn it off yourself. Again, this is for Apple Intel, this is for Apple Silicon only. So you have to go in there and manually turn this off. Turn off Apple Intelligence, and then it'll be unavailable. In previous versions, you could click not now to not set up Apple Intelligence, but now with 15.3 forward, including new installs and the update, it's turning on automatically for you. So if you do not wanna use it, turn off this radial here, and that'll turn off our Apple Intelligence. Let me know if you want to do if you want me to do a video that shows how to disable and remove the downloaded database in the macOS operating system itself. You can also add a workplace ID request for external Apple Intelligence integrations such as, such as chat GPT. MDM can disable transcription no, notification summaries and notes. AirPlay connects successfully when using the built-in firewall and content extension. And there's an improved stability for apps over VPN connections when using the built-in firewall and the content. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench browser benchmark scores for a MacBook Air. We got a 2380 on our 15.2 build previously and an 8768 in the multi-core. And on 15.3, we got 2384 on the single and 8762 on the multi. So right in that same area of the previous update. On our Intel Mac mini, we've got a 1572 on a single and a 6728 for 15.2. On 15.3, we got a 1568 and a 6781 for 15.3. Now let's take a sneak peek at our unsupported Macs with OpenCore Legacy Patcher and 15.3. There is so far no associated OpenCore Legacy Patcher update for 15.3. Everything looks to be working very well. We are still on 2.2.0. If that does change, of course, I will make sure to update you. And I say sneak peek because I always put out a second video that is focused on OpenCore Legacy Patcher with the latest Mac was Sequoia update. Our update machines that we are looking at is our Mac Pro late 2013. This is my caching server machine that I use for all the software updates and it is doing very well on 15.3 and 2.2.0. No noticeable issues whatsoever. On our Retina 12 inch early 2016 device, we are running 2.2.0 and 15.3. No known issues over here. Everything's running great. And for our non-metal machine, quick look, We've got our 17 inch late 2011 machine running 2.2.0. Everything seems to be running well. I did get a login window crash on this device that I gotta take a closer look at. I don't wanna make this look like all of these machines are having this, but this is why I do the testing. So something weird comes up, maybe it's my machine, maybe it's a wider issue, I don't think so, but that's what I wanna be able to take a closer look at. If you've installed 15 point there and you're unsupported Mac, let me know in the comments how your install went and if you had any issues or everything went a-okay. Before we go, I wanted to celebrate a small achievement for this YouTube channel we hit 100,000 subscribers. 
and I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of my Patreon members, my viewers, subscribers, website blog viewers, all the people who have reached out to me over chat, email, Slack, Discord, all those. It's been an amazing journey these past five years, and I just would not be where I'm at today without you being a dedicated viewer and subscriber. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.